Sometimes we lose the closeness we need to have with Jesus. Because we're tormented, we're doing this and that and everything, we, we kind of pull away. But we never lose a relationship. I always think of Jesus when he was a young boy teaching in the temple. And they took off. And Joseph said, Mary, where's your son? Joseph and Mary said, where's your son? <laughs> Both of them lost track of where their son was. And they went back to get him. They did not lose relationship. They lost fellowship. They lost that togetherness that Jesus desired to have with his disciples, that, gathered, that great unity coming together. He is our propitiation. He took our place. He says, my blood shed for you. This is my body given for you. It's given for us. Given for anyone who would receive Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. He's done a great work. He's done a great work in my life. How about you? Yes, sir. I'm saved. <laughs> That's the greatest work he's ever done for me. Is give me a new life. A new hope, a new purpose, a new reason, a new mind, a new purpose to live for him. Not living for myself, but living for him. A new mind thinking on the things of him. Last night I was having a little trouble going to sleep. And I'm memorizing chapter 4, Philippians verse 8. Where it says, think on these things. Things that are right, things that are pure, things that are good, things that are noble. Things that are excellingly beautiful. And think on the things that are worthy of praise. Think on things of God, not things of my own. I won't tell you what I was thinking about, but it was something silly. I don't know about you guys, but you all know how to cook. I bought a new air fryer. And I read the instructions last night. I don't know if I'm ever going to use it. <coughs> but I bought it. It's a nice thing looking, nice looking thing on my little thing. But, but that was, you ever have something just run in your mind when you're thinking about things that it doesn't have a basket that I can see? <laughs> I said, God, I'm sorry. Please let me think on the things of you. And I went to sleep. There's no better place to fall asleep than in prayer talking to God. Amen. He affirms my conviction. He said, no one can snatch you away out of my hand or out of God's hand. You belong to me. I write these things so that you may know for sure that you were saved. He renews our faith. How many of you need renewal faith sometimes when you're going through life? He rededicates us to him. He realizes that Christ is our re we need to realize that Christ is our redeemer. I'm glad we sang that song. He paid the price. He paid the ransom. He set us free. Set us free from the bondage of sin. No more penalty. No more power. No more guilt. I am innocent. I have been found free. Set free by the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> This is a happy, holy communion time. Coming together is what communion means, coming together. For all baptized believers in Jesus Christ. It's not for everybody. It's a privilege that we have as children of God. 
And if you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you know for sure that he is your Savior, and you believe that in your heart, you have the privilege to be called a child of God. I'm a child of God. And you know what? Nobody can defeat me. They may kill this old body, but I'm still going to be alive. I'll be like Billy Graham. My last breath here will be my first breath in heaven. I will be like that. We are to drink. It says, drink from it all. All of you. Matthew 26, 27. Draw together. God wanted to be here with us. And he is. He wanted to be with the apostles and he was. Now we want to be together. <clears throat> for the purpose of this blessed, holy Lord's Supper communion together. We are one in Christ, strong bond, triumphing over Satan, defeating his, his wiles by putting on the full armor of God every day. Sanctified. Sanctified means I'm being cleansed every day. More holy. You know, justification is a one-time thing. Sanctification is a continuing thing. I'm continually being cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. And one day, glory. Glory is a one-time thing. When I reach home, I will be in glory. Hallelujah! In case you were asleep, I'm so sorry. <laughs> God is just so good, folks. He abides in me and I abide in him. How about you? Can you say that? That he abides in you and you abide in him and you're one with the Father? He reconciled us to the Father. We were separated because of our sin. And now we have that close relationship with our Heavenly Father. The last thing he says is, But behold, the hand of the one betraying me is with mine on the table. For indeed, the Son of Man is going as has been determined. Examine yourself. Do you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you baptized in him? Do you know for sure that he is yours and you are his? Do you have forgiveness in your heart? For others as he has forgiven you. Time to examine ourselves. Time to see if I'm what I should be for him. And it's time to pray and say, God, here I am. Wherever I am, out of your way, out of your swords, please bring me back. It's time for Christians to return to that joy of his salvation, as David said. Restore unto me the joy of that salvation and the strength of who you are in me. As we partake of the Lord's Supper, we need to realize that he is our atonement, covering our sins. So when God looks at us, he sees us as perfect children. Not because of who we are, because none of us are perfect, but we are in Christ Jesus, and that's how God sees us, through his spilled blood. And we have a new covenant with him in that blood. We have a new personality with him because of his broken body. We have a new life because of him. As we partake of this Lord's Supper, let's remember who Jesus is for each one of us. What he has done. What he's doing for us. And what he's got planned. He's, he said, I won't drink of this anymore to the kingdom. He knows we're going to be there. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to be there with him. He will be at the banquet table with us. 
Boy, you talk about fried chicken. Now there's going to be fried chicken on that table. What a glory. Hallelujah. That's how I knew it was going to be a preacher. I actually got a sudden craving for southern fried chicken. <laughs> God has got everything worked out. He knew he was going to suffer and die for us. He knew that on the cross, he was going to forgive us. He knew that one day he would raise from the dead. Three days later, he was up walking, talking, going out. And he knows that we're going to be with him one day in heaven. Hallelujah. Bob, we need an encouragement word. And this is our encouraging word. The Holy Spirit working through the Lord's Supper. Help us know that we are somebody when we have Jesus. Without him, not nothing, but with him, all things are possible. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this Lord's Supper. Thank you for the privilege that we have as Christians to be able to take it. I pray that people would understand that it's, it's for that believer that, that has come to you, not for anyone else. Father, I pray that you will help us to be grateful for one another and thankful that we were able to gather together in your presence here today. In Jesus' name I pray. As the deacons come, get yourself prepared. Get ready for this time. saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Here we be very Lord, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, for your life that you give each and every one, not just one, but for all. We just take this bread, Lord. For you, we know that you give your life for us. We just pray, Lord, we will do it in remembrance of me. In Jesus' name. They took it together. He said, do this in remembrance of him. Let's do it together. Then he said, this is my, this is my blood spilled for you. This cup. Took the cup. And after they had eaten, saying, this cup is poured out for you as a new covenant in my blood. You have a new covenant, a new relationship with God that you never had before. 
Every time you receive this, it reminds you of that new relationship. It reminds you of who you are in him and how he works in you. Bob, would you lead us in prayer, please? Certainly. Thank you, Lord. As we come to your table, we ask uh, continued blessings. But at this time, I'd like to come forth and ask that I be cleansed, that you would forgive me of my sins that I am aware of, and you would also forgive me of the sins that I am unaware of. Make me clean where I can be an improved servant of yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'll get it. I like to think about them sitting there just saying an encouraging word. You say an encouraging word to whoever you're sitting next to, whoever passes you the, just say an encouraging word. You don't have to yell it out, you just whisper and say, thank you for what you did. Thank you for who you are. As the Bible says, after they had finished the supper, they went out singing hymns. And one of the ones that we know and that I'm going to sing, that, that we're going to sing today, this is the day the Lord has made. It's from Psalm 118. Because they probably sang the Psalm 119, 118. We're going to sing, this is the day the Lord has made. We're going to stand. And after with this, we will be dismissed. Okay? This is the day, this, this is, is the day that the Lord has made.